Hey YouTube, Coppersan here. Today we're going to train another character to level 200. But in this video we're gonna focus on the gear that you should get when you're building up your first character in a new server. We're playing in Barrow today and they only have one other level 10 character on this server. So we're not using any link skills or legion effects for this video. I do recommend that before you start working on your main character to at least have some link skill characters and legion characters ready. Especially Mercedes, Demon Slayer, Demon Avenger, Kana and Evan are pretty good for EXP and damage buffs. You know, just to make that grinding a tad more easy. In this video we'll mainly focus on the gear that is needed up until level 200. Since we are on the regular server we will be using the auction house. However some of the tips in this video are of course still useful for the reboot server as well. One of the most tough things that you'll face when creating a new character on a new server is the lack of mesos. We are really poor. So that's why at level 30 we completed both the LNL Fairy Academy and Rihanna Stray Dungeon. Completing both will give you a nice 2 million meso you can use as starting fun for whatever you'd like. And of course you'll also get spell traces and of course a decent cape, face accessory, eye accessory and belt that we will be using for most of our journey until we reach at least level 100. Once you reach the end of the LNL Fairy Academy team dungeon and defeated the Mole King once, keep changing channels and keep defeating this boss until you get at least 3 of the scrolls that he can drop. That way you can scroll your cape right away, the ones you get from completing this team dungeon. Defeating team dungeon bosses, like the Mole King, can also reward you with reward points, which can be used in the cash shop. Trying to collect as many as possible and trying to do as many boss runs a day as possible, just to get those additional reward points, you can use those to buy, for example, spawn and EXP increase items, as well as a water of life to revive your pet, for example. Some other good equipment to get is the ones that you can get from those do you know about pets, do you know about potential quests. These quests give a free pet, a shoulder and a ring. The pet is also really useful since we will be looting as much as possible to sell off to the NPCs because yeah, we're really, really poor. After completing the Rihanna Stray Team Dungeon, I went to Pyrian. There are a few maps there that have this wanted sign that will reward you with a small amount of masses for completing their quest. It's not much, but if you're playing a potion hungry class then it could be useful, you know, every little bit of funding counts. Also make sure to go into those Polo and Frito dungeons as well as the Infernal Wolf dungeon. The, these dungeons reward bags and in those bags can be a ton of useful items like cubes, spell traces, potions and even this very fancy metal like honestly. <laughs> I've been playing MapleStory for I don't know how many years now and on my main account I've never ever gotten this medal. And now I create a new character on a new server and like the third dungeon I go in I get this freaking medal man. <sighs> All the gear that we are using right now, we just found from monsters actually. I've been training a lot at Starry to the Sky 1 on Orbis and most of the drops that I get there I just wear, you know. You don't have to buy anything from any NPC uh, up until level 100. You don't even need to upgrade anything up until level 100. So don't worry about that, just save your meso, save your spell traces, go into those dungeons and try and build up a bit of a meso balance before you hit at least level 100. We reached level 100 so fast we actually got the seat and after completing the job advancement we fought Zakum, which I forgot to film, whoops. Zakum drops the first items that you want to get. Those are the aquatic leather eye accessory and the condensed power crystal. If you can't find these items from Zakum, you can just buy them in the auction house if you are on the regular server. Bosses like Zakum also drop boss crystals that can be sold in the free market for a ton of mesos. So every day you also have to do those boss runs to get those boss crystals together with the reward points of course. For our next training spot we do need 5 star force. So I just scrolled and star force the shoulder that we got from the tutorial quests. When you do really need something like star force try to star force something lower level to save a bit of meso. Because the lower level the item the cheaper it is to star force and the less spell traces it needs to upgrade. But do remember that we didn't star force to upgrade anything up until this point and the five star force is really all we need. After upgrading our shoulder a little bit we go to Skynest 2 and leave through where we level up until level 110. At this point you'll also start to notice like wow I have actually a lot of skill points but I don't have any mastery books. Should I get some with my meso? Well unless you have like 50 million just laying around you know you're quite rich already. Uh, if you're starting new, I don't think you are, but let's say you are, then of course you can do that. However, since we are still a very poor little maplers, we're not going to buy any mastery books from the NPCs. Instead, we're going to do a couple of quests later on that will get you a ton of free books. Because we need all the messes that we get to Star Force and of course to purchase some gear later. Speaking of messos, there of course are plenty of ways to get a lot of messos. I will quickly touch on that before we mention a bit more about the equipment. You can do Maple Tour, which rewards messos for every run that you do. If you do Monster Park runs on Friday, the box there also gives you a couple of mesos. There is Ursus runs that you can do every time you defeat Ursus, you get around, I don't know, 2 million and there's double meso times as well. Of course you have the boss crystals, of course you have stuff that you pick up from the ground that you will sell. And you can also buy some meso boxes from the Legion store, but I recommend you might want to save those Legion coins for level up potions or stuff like that. 
But about those mastery books, because of course we want that, that's also part of your funding, right? You want to build your characters, not just items, it's also leveling up, being able to level up your skills. So we're going to start the Silent Crusade questline, because this questline will not only give you a ton of potions, a uh, platinum cross ring that's quite decent for its level, and we will be using that for a little while until we can replace it later on. You also get a superior hunter title, which is the only title with stats that you'll get for a while, and this questline also rewards mastery books, plus you unlock a store where you can purchase mastery books as well as spell traces from these coins that you'll get from defeating bosses. Overall, really awesome quest line. If you are just starting out, this is the quest line you need to be doing. We reached the point where we're going to upgrade our gear again because we want to train at more Star Force monsters at the bottom of the Ludibrium Clock Tower. This is not something that you have to do, but personally I don't mind spending some mesos and spell traces just to train a bit faster because, you know, I want to get to level 200 fast as well. Since we just need an attack boost and around 30 Star Force, we're going to scroll and Star Force our axe that we found with some 100% scrolls and are Star Forcing it to 5 stars. Together with our other lower level equipment. That way we can quickly increase our damage and we're not spending too many spell traces and Star Force on items that we will replace pretty soon anyway. You can also reroll your inner ability to try and get some higher stats. And after all that is done, we finally move to the Ludium Clock Tower to train there and do the Populatus prequest. Because unlocking more bosses means more boss crystals means more mesos. Once you reach level 100, you can also join a guild, and I highly recommend to do so. Not only is it more fun to talk to Maplers while grinding, they can also help you out with questions, and they can maybe even carry you. Since the guild that I joined is really high level, they also have a ton of guild skills that will really help me get stronger right away, like increased damage, increased EXP, discounts on items. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Nime Guild of Birad. I didn't actually tell them I was Copper I just joined, uh, like, hey, uh, can I join? I'm a beginner. And the nice guild leader accepted me. So that was pretty cool. Once you reach level 130, after training a bit in Ludibrium, you can complete all the wanted sign quests in Korean Folktown for some good mesos and EXP as well. I was doing a bit of limit testing and my damage just felt short when I tried to solo normal Hilla. I think it's time for another upgrade. Zakum hasn't been kind at all and I didn't find any of the two items that I mentioned earlier, so I had no other choice than to purchase them from the auction house. By now we collected a whooping 17 million meso, so we're going to get to the following items. They're all pretty cheap, around 1 million each. Of course the prices do depend on the server. We get an aquatic leather eye accessory, a condensed power crystal, a silver blossom ring, this item drops from a normal horn tail, an infras ring, which is I believe one of the items that you can get from doing the Lionheart Castle questline, a golden clover belt, also dropped by, I don't know, Magnus or Pink Bean or something, a black metal shoulder, that one is definitely dropped by Magnus, and a full set of level 150 Fafnir gear, so weapon, hat, top and bottom. Everything I just mentioned we will replace again at one point, except for the level 150 hat, top and bottom. Those three items you will wear for the rest of your maple story journey. So I'm gonna be mindful when upgrading them, for example, only using 15% scrolls or other prime scrolls or whatever you have, or replace them later on if you just want to go wild while scrolling and you need a damage boost right now. All the other items you can scroll with 70% spell traces since we're going to replace them anyway. Most of the items are part of the boss set, so they will give additional bonus stats as well. I highly recommend getting those items. In Reboot you'll have to do the boss runs yourself because there's no trading, uh, but in the regular server you can just get these items from the auction house, or if you are a bit stronger, then you can also defeat those bosses. Right now at this point we're definitely not strong enough to defeat those bosses because this is our first character, there's no link skills, there's no legion, uh, we don't do enough damage basically. So we really need to get stronger first and the auction house really helps you. When buying these items, don't worry too much about their stats, like if they're really good or really bad. Just buy something that's within your budget. It's just a short power boost that we'll need to continue advancing in the game. It's fine to replace items along the way. Actually, I didn't have enough mesos for a Fafni weapon, so I just got a Von Lien weapon with some really nice bonus stats. <laughs> need to save up for that one a bit longer. We're still a bit short on mastery books as well, so we're going to complete the Golden Temple and the Partum Teen Dungeon for some additional mastery books. After that we go to the U Garden to farm some special etc drops. These items have a super low drop rate, but it's totally worth the grind. These three etc items can be found from monster drops and you can turn them into an NPC that will make totems out of them. Those totems only last for a month, but they are one of the best free totems you can get in the game. You just need to replace them every month, that's the only downside. I found two of them and gave up afterwards because I was a bit short on time. And also don't shy away from rerolling your inner ability for some additional drop rate percentage. We also got ourselves a level 140 Empress cape, gloves and shoes from the auction house since I was still running around on really low level gear and that had to stop man. I was wearing so I was wearing like level 70, level 80 gear. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, you can also just get the Pencilar gear instead but I was like you know what Empress is fine. 
for now. We are already level 150 at this point and we're going to work towards replacing some items of the boss set already. We completed the Heisen Temple Team Dungeon three times and got a new shoulder, ring and belt. The shoulder and belt we are going to replace again afterwards, but the ring is pretty good. You might want to replace it with a event ring later on, but I think the Kana ring is actually pretty nice. Problem is that if you boom it, then you can't get a new one. So it is a bit tricky to upgrade. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to ring that bell notification to stay up to date when new videos are released. Now that we are a bit stronger, we can also fight more bosses for Mesos. Make sure to do this every day for the rest of your maple life. I finally collected enough Mesos to get a Falcony weapon, which I did, and I also got myself some cracked Golux earrings. I kept upgrading my gear along the way, adding a few stars here and there because you will need to get 100 Star Force for the 5th job advancement. I also exchanged some of the Empress gear with Penslar gear that I found from monsters that had better stats. I also started cubing my weapons. You can use the free cubes that you can get from the Polo and Fritto bags and try to get at least epic potential on your items. Preferably plus 6% of your main stat or plus attack or magic attack on your weapon. Like what I have on my Adele. Don't worry too much about flaming or getting to plus 15 stars, it's just not worth it for this gear because we're going to replace it again anyway. Unless of course you find yourself really stuck, but then I would just recommend to keep grinding those boss crystals and get enough mesos to just purchase other gear from the auction house. Because this is the gear that we will be using to reach level 200 easy peasy. I also star forced my weapon already to 10 stars, because that's what you need also for the 5th job advancement, plus you really need a power boost and this is the, the easiest way to do that. After scrolling all the items except the level 150 hat, top and bottom, we are going to star force just a couple of them every now and then, like if I have a spare 100k mesos, I just star force one of the things to one star, collect another 100k and then star force the other one. Try to get your hands on some potential scrolls as well so you can start cubing your gear. Just keep in mind that cubing also costs mesos, so you will need to save up again to get stronger. But yeah, that's how I got to level 200 with this gear. You can do the exact same by just following what I'm doing, of course only in the regular server. For the end of this video I also quickly want to talk about what other gear to get. Like hey, what can I get after I reach level 200? What's next for me in store? Do keep in mind though that my highest level character is only level 223 and I never really focused on gear that much. So if you have any feedback or any other ideas about what I'm about to say, please leave a comment and let me know your insights as well. But after level 200 I would grind to get to the following. For rings, try and aim for 3 Golex rings plus a Meister ring. Meister rings can be created by yourself. Golex rings can be obtained from defeating the Golex boss, which is a level 180 boss that has been revamped recently and is quite difficult to beat. So I would recommend to just buy that item instead from the auction house if you can. The rings are quite expensive though. About 200 million each in Bira. At least for the cheaper ones. The blockbuster, Masteria Through Time, also rewards a really nice medal that I can recommend. And the blockbuster Monoth rewards one of the best titles, except for the Pink Bean Event one. Both blockbusters do take a couple of hours to complete though, but they can be completed quite easily, it just takes a while. Replace your Aquatic Letter I accessory thing and the Intense Power Crystal with a Sweetwater Monocle and Sweetwater Tattoo and replace them afterwards with the Magic Eye Patch dropped by Heart Damien and the Berserker Face accessory which is dropped by Heart Lotus. This is of course if you're really far into the game or you can get really nice boss carries and that's also nice. Get a Pink Bean Holy Cup for your pocket slot and later replace it with the pocket item that Heart Will drops, that Magic Book or whatever it is. Replace your gloves, shoes, shoulder, weapon and cape with the Arcane Umbra set. You can also go for the Absolute step as an in-between step, but it's totally up to you. Like if you have the Mesos, you can just skip that step and just go for the Arcane Umbra set right away. For your other accessories, get the Superior Golex Earrings, Belt and Pendant. And of course, don't forget to scroll your pet equipment and your Android Heart. You want to scroll everything with 15% scrolls, with Prime scrolls, just anything that gives the most stats really and of course whatever you can afford. You can also get some nice bonus stats from your familiars if you're lucky and of course your inner ability. I can, I can show you some examples of my characters again, I'm not really invested in gear that much. So this is the one that I have in Bira where I have all this noob gear. And then my Adele has some slightly better gear, a lot of 6% stats on most of their items but nothing too crazy but enough to grind decently. And then we have my battle mage which is still using some really old items. Like this is a really old account and I never really bothered with exchanging some of my items. And that's all I have to say about gear, man. This, this video turned out way longer than I expected. As always, many thanks to our members for making this video possible. Thanks to Quinn, Niels de Konek, Rama Waag, Zenny, Shen125, Sebastian Hanoi, FLX, Jeff Wang, Pinky Traveler, Zapfire Gaming, Terry Kim and Jiju. If you would like to be mentioned here as well and get early access to new videos, check out the join button below this video. As always, thanks for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling.